Hello and welcome to Draper at Home, a podcast brought to you by Draper. I'm your host, Michelle Dawn Mooney. And today we're talking about choosing shade fabrics for your home, an exciting time and a lot of things that go into that. So we're going to hear from two great guests today who will help break it down for us. Clint Childress is Director of Residential Markets for Draper and Nathan Wintermute is Product Manager for Mermay USA. Thank you both for being with me today. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. I'm looking forward to this conversation, but before we do that, can you both give me a brief bio if you can, starting with you, Nathan? Sure. Uh, so thank you, Michelle. Uh, my name is Nathan. I've been with uh, Mermaid USA for about six years now. Uh, our company focuses on the manufacturing of fabrics for roller window shades. So we leave the shades over to companies like Draper. So we're just focused on the technology that goes behind the fabrics. And what about you, Clint? Yeah, I've worked with Draper for 23 years, and in the shading division here, we've seen a great amount of growth over that period of time, working with great partners like uh, Mermaid USA, and we make the final product. We get the fabric in, we get the rollers, uh, motors, controllers, other mechanisms, and build complete shading systems that you'd see in your home. Perfect. So I want to dive right in here. How do we know when it's time to add or upgrade our shades, because this can be a hard process. And sometimes we delay things and we think, oh, we'll, we'll wait for this. So what benchmarks do we need to look out for that will really let us know, you know what, it, it's time? Yeah, one of the things I think you should first consider when you're when you're looking at new shading systems is what do you want to do with the rest of the home? What's the decor? Uh, is that hit that mark where things are outdated a little bit, and so you want to freshen it up, have a new look, have a new hardware? Um, has that fabric started to fray a little bit, been worn by pets, animals, kids? Um, are we at a point where we just need to freshen it up? Uh, aesthetically or get that uh, physical uh, product working better, looking better than what it currently is. Uh, exterior and interior products, we make both. And so both have different considerations. Exterior products, you're usually looking about a, a 10 year lifespan if you take care of those products and maintain them annually. Interior products, they can last much longer if you're maintaining them, taking care of them properly. However, you'll probably want to update the aesthetics in your home about every 10 years or so. And so that's generally when we see a lot of people changing out the interior window treatments as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Clint, and maybe you can speak to this as well. I know there's a lot of variability that we can have with uh, connectivity using the hardware and scheduling perhaps with automation. Uh, can you speak to that at all? I know that's a big, a big thing with homeowners now. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants the smart shade. So they want to have the attributes of controlling via an app a remote uh, wall switches, but app control with uh, motorized operators is certainly a fast growing segment. Uh, they can be battery operated shades. We just need to recharge them. Uh, kind of like you recharge your cell phone, right? You plug it in, you charge it up. However, the battery shades last about a year on a single charge, not quite like your cell phone there. But uh, the shade fabric in particular is something that it, it lasts for a long time in interior applications. And what we see is that that type, if they select the right fabric, they can achieve the right view, view through and glare control they want, and then be happy with them for until the next renovation happens, which might be 10 years or more in the future. Yeah, and I could also add on uh, from the fabric end, what you're looking for if you're thinking about changing the fabric, changing the shade or is going to be, is that fabric accomplishing the goals uh, within your space, within your home? There's a lot of factors that go into picking a fabric to begin with. And sometimes those can change, like the level of privacy that you're, you're looking for in a sp particular space. Uh, obviously the color, if you're changing the interior aesthetics or the exterior aesthetics of your home, the color is going to have a big impact there. The openness of the fabric is going to change how well you can view through the fabric interior or from the exterior and uh, just the thermal protection that a shade can provide. So maybe if you chop down a tree on a certain facade of your house and that's going to let a lot more sunlight through, that would be an opportunity where a new shade of a different color or a different openness might be important. Yeah, a lot of variables here that I don't think we we often think of as, you know, we just heard from both of you. Mm -hmm. So we've reached the point where we know, okay, we want to make some changes. You know, Clint, you talked about maybe it's just the aesthetics. And then we talked about, you know, further into that, the durability and kind of the 
the life of that shade. So what are some of the first questions we need to ask when it comes to choosing shades? What specific points do we need to take into consideration? Yeah, and that's a really good question. There are so many variables that go into selecting a fabric and homeowners don't usually think about this. Some of my friends I've talked to uh, who are installing shades and they're not thinking about the full picture of what goes into selecting a fabric. They just want a fabric in their empty window. They don't have any shades, they need shades. So some of the questions that we have to ask are, what is the function that we need that fabric to perform? And what are the aesthetics that we need the fabric to have? And going to function, we really talk about providing occupant, occupant comfort. And there's a lot of aspects that go into occupant comfort. We're talking about heat control. We are talking about glare control, how much privacy a fabric is going to provide and potentially acoustical performance of a fabric. These are all things that fabrics vary from openness to color, and they all have a big impact on how the fabric is going to actually act in your home. And different fabrics, depending on the color and depending on the openness, can have drastically different performance. So a white fabric is going to have very high thermal protection, whereas a dark fabric is going to have much lower thermal protection, but it has benefits in other areas like glare control and a better view. So when a customer comes to us asking what fabric they want for their space, we just have to ask them what their priorities are for a project. Yeah, and, and Nathan, when you look at interior versus exterior shading systems, th there's some performance differences there as well mm -hmm. between fabrics, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, when we're talking about interior versus exterior, we have different fabrics that perform better for the exterior and are designed for the exterior. So for our interior fabrics uh, versus the exterior fabrics, in, on the interior, we have what we refer to as a 95 tex fabric. So it's a little bit of a thinner fabric. On the exterior, we refer to that as a 165 tex fabric. So it's a little bit thicker. They have the same weave pattern. They're both a, a two by two basket weave, but for the exterior, it's a little bit stronger. It's going to have a little bit higher tensile strength uh, to perform on the exterior for that environment. Yeah, and, and to tag onto that, we, glare control, Comfort control are a huge part of selection. If, are you buying that window shade because you want to keep uh, the glare off of your television? Um, do you want to right. keep the, the glare in um, from coming in off the front porch? Or are you looking at heat control? As, you, as Nathan mentioned, heat control is a big aspect too. Are you in a big sunroom that gets really warm? So we're looking for a shading fabric that's going to help reduce that temperature down in that sunroom um, so it makes it more comfortable to sit. And when you're on the exterior, are you, are you looking for a shade fabric that maintains the view, but really cuts down uh, the ability for wind and rain ingress if we're using a zip type of shade? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of different selection factors there. And that's where your, your window coverings professional uh, can, can help you with the selection process, depending on what your needs are. And then there's also privacy and blackout. So mm -hmm. uh, there's some privacy and blackout um, products that Mermay has that if you're in a bedroom situation, well, you may want to consider privacy quite heavily or bathroom situation as well. A lot to take into consideration. We're talking about aesthetics and acoustics and, you know, the thermal aspect in, in privacy. Sustainability, though, is a huge part when it comes to shading for both of you. So tell me about that when it comes to the manufacturing and design. How does that come into play with choosing a fabric? Yeah, so it definitely is coming more into play over recent years. Since I've been in the industry, I've seen it as a growing trend uh, the entire time that I've been with Mermay. Uh, we have several fabrics that we call sustainable. And when we are referring to our sustainable products, we are typically talking about products like Green Screen Evolve and Green Screen Revive that are actually manufactured using recycled polyester. So we are actually working with a, a company that takes recycled water bottle pellets and converting it to polyester yarn that we can then put into fabric. However, beyond that, there are a lot of other aspects that we relate to sustainability, such as being chemically clean. So there are many lists and regulations that require fabrics and other building products to not contain certain chemicals. One example of that is the LBC red list. There is a list of chemicals that are banned on that list. And so those products that I already mentioned are LBC red list compliant. And so part of sustainability is being 
chemically conscious and uh, health health conscious. Yeah, and I, I think that's a, a big part. Is is Draper um, plays a role in that, and the fact that waste fabrics that we have that can be recycled, we send off to be recycled. Uh, then we also have a program where people can send back shades uh, and divert them from a landfill if they're of a fabric material that can be recycled as well. So we look to offer those things. But then we also have um, uh, analysis of different fabrics uh, that we can provide um, that show that the makeup of it, as as Nathan mentioned, there's these red lists. And so they um, have gone through different testing. And Nathan, the name of the testing aspects, those reports is eluding me right now. The, uh, uh, are, you, are you thinking of Green Guard for one? Uh, no, the um, parts per million breakdown of the fabrics. We call that Do a... So we have a, a, an HPD, which is a health HPD, product declaration. Yes. Yeah. So uh, part of the sustainability topic is uh, being very transparent with our products. So an HPD is a document that is a manufacturer self-declared document where we list 100% of the compositions that go into a product down to 100 parts per million, which is a very small percentage. I think it's 0.01%. Uh, uh, by weight within the product. So it essentially lists all the components that go into a product. And then it also lists possible chemical hazards or warnings nationwide for that chemical. Yeah, and I'll tag on that. Uh, the, the HPDs that Mermaid puts together are obviously very thorough and give that end user or homeowner, building owner, that comfort that the products that they have are, are non-harmful, which if somebody has not a, a, a another company, another weaver hasn't provided those, hasn't done the testing. There can always be that question of, of what's in that material. What does that mean for this environment and usage? But uh, we remove away any kind of doubt that this is anything other than safe uh, with the HPDs, which uh, Mermay has uh, put together. Mm -hmm. And I'll add on that this is a huge focus for us going forward. We have about three or four separate projects, all focused on new products, that are sustainably focused either with recycled chemicals or reducing hazardous materials. Yeah, that really is amazing. And Clint, to your point, it you know, really gives you a peace of mind to know that, you know, shopping is hard enough and I'm a good shopper and I do a lot of it, <laughs> but there's a lot, there are a lot of factors to take into consideration and it's kind of a big under going of, of trying to figure out what you want and, and what your needs are, but then to have that peace of mind that you don't have to worry about is something going to be harmful that I'm bringing into my home and is it going to be sustainable? Really important factors for the customer. So what do customers need to know about the whole process of either adding or upgrading their shades? Can you maybe walk us through how that works? Yeah, certainly. So when it comes to adding shading systems or upgrading your shading systems, uh, it's, it's generally looking at what are your needs. So adding shading systems, one thing that's grown in popularity recently is exterior shading. A lot of people are mm -hmm. using exterior shading, um, not in just putting shades on a, windows on the exterior, but using uh, what we call a zip shade to enclose an outdoor seating space, an outdoor patio space to extend that outdoor living area. So there's a lot of just education that a lot of people would first go through because there's been a lot of innovation in shading over the last uh decade and a lot of new products that they probably didn't even know existed, things such as the zip shade product. But then there's also taking a look at what kind of motors, controls, uh, app control as we've moved to a smartphone society. If you want to control those shades off of a smartphone, you certainly can. And adding shades when you're using quality products like Mermaid becomes pretty um, easy to do because the dye lots the ability for them to hold that color consistency. So if we go in, we add shades. So if you had a, a Mermet e-screen uh, from five or six years ago, we can get that same uh, Mermet e-screen today and we can have a, a very good color match even, even though it's been up interior shade applications for a number of years. So there's a lot of quality that we can use with the Mermet product to make sure that those upgrades happen as seamlessly as possible. Yeah, I just want to add on earlier, Clint, you mentioned that sometimes these shades, especially on the exterior, are going to be around for potentially 10 years. So if a fabric needs to be replaced because it's at that end of life, we want to ensure that the color consistency is going to be the same after that replacement. 
Yeah, absolutely. When uh, you you have shades up in the house, anything can happen to them over a period of time. Um, uh, pets, kids, uh, just accidental. Life. <laughs> right? Basically. So, yeah, it's easy to replace that shade and have confidence that it, it's going to be matching, blending with the other as well. Um, so there, it's never been easier to add and even upgrade shades. We can upgrade a lot of manual shade operators to motorized shade operators nowadays as well. So we can take an existing shade and just upgrade the operator and give it a new, fresh operation. We've covered a lot of territory, but any final thoughts as we're wrapping up and maybe a call to action where people can go to learn more about everything we're talking about today? Yeah, so you can go to uh, draperinc.com uh, or draperathome.com and learn more about uh, the, the Draper uh, window shading products and find out all the different information that you want on Mermaid Fabrics and all the shading systems that we have. The main thing I think we want to, or I want to drive home in this conversation is that shading options are growing. There's more and more options as far as interior options, exterior options today more than ever. And Draper works with high quality partners. We work with people that produce a lot of their products here in the United States, such as Mermaid USA. And we want to make sure that we're providing you great value for your purchase. And for Mermaid, if you're interested in finding out more information, you can go to mermaidusa.com. We have all of our fabrics with all of their specifications and information listed on our website, including information related to sustainability and uh, those chemical hazard preventions that we talked about. Uh, the main thing I would like to emphasize is there are so many different fabrics that you need to think about your space and the importance of glare control, heat protection, and privacy, and all the factors we mentioned when choosing a shade. And I'll be honest, I'm thinking of all of those things now with <laughs> some of the windows that I know we may need an upgrade here in my own home. So Clint Childress, Director of Residential Markets for Draper, and Nathan Winterview, Product Manager from Remay USA. I want to thank both of you for your time. A lot of interesting points and things that I would not have thought of, once again, being a potential customer here. So thank you for giving us this time and sharing this important information. And hopefully you're going to make it a little bit easier for customers out there who are looking to replace or upgrade. So appreciate you being here today. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to Draper at Home, a podcast brought to you by Draper. I'm your host, Michelle Don Mooney. Of course, once again, you can go to draperinc.com or draperathome.com for more information there or mermaidusa.com for more on the conversation that you heard right here. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you subscribe to this podcast for more engaging conversations and we hope to see you soon. <laughs>